Hey everybody, this is Lee Sanders and you're listening to a very special edition remixed version of the RCWR show exclusively for YouTube. It is a early morning, May 6, 2012. Earlier this week I had the privilege and the honor of interviewing a Midwest up-and-coming rapper by the name of Scooter, who is a just a phenomenal Christian rapper and I really had fun doing this interview with him as he is our second guest on the RCWR show and we talked about his musical career we also talked about the fallout from the WWE Extreme Rules pay-per-view and we also talked about the aftermath from the pay-per-view on this week's episode of WWE Raw Super Show and it's a really fun interview here it was actually a really great show I really wish that I would have been able to upload the entire episode for you YouTube fans and followers but due to the time restraints uh, I wasn't able to upload it to YouTube as they said that the length was just too long so you're only hearing uh, a portion of my interview with Scooter but you can hear the entire episode of this which I really recommend that you check out because I've been getting a good ton of feedback from our episode and a lot of listeners they really loved it they loved Scooter being on the show and just all around it's been nothing but good praise for the episode so I definitely recommend that you check it out you can access it by going to our radio's website page at www.blogtalkradio.com slash the rcwr show again that's www.blogtalkradio.com slash the rcwr show and for those of you that have iphones and you have the itunes and zoom you can definitely access that episode as well as other episodes through those respected marketplaces on iTunes and Zoom, keywords the RCWR show. Now, on a programming note, this coming Tuesday we are going to air a hour special at 9 p.m. Eastern. It'll be dubbed as the Avengers Fan Reaction Edition, and I had the opportunity to interact with fans from various states, various cities even some right here in the DC Maryland Virginia area and got their reaction to Marvel's latest movie The Avengers as it officially starts the summer of comic book movies and you're definitely gonna wanna check out that show and hear what the fans have to say about that I'll also be chiming in my thoughts on the movie as well but this is really a fan edition episode so I encourage you to check that out we will still be doing a WWE Raw post show and get you all caught up with wrestling but we won't be coming on until 12 a.m. on Wednesday so once again Tuesday night at 9 p.m. we will air that Avengers special and then in about two and a half to three hours later at 12 a.m. we will air the WWE Raw post show so definitely check that out for your latest fix in wrestling and entertainment news I really hope that you all enjoy this snippet of my interview with special guest Scooter and as always you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Just check out the links below in the video description. Hope you all are enjoying. You all are having a great weekend. Do join us this Tuesday night for the Avengers fan reaction. And Scooter, bro, how's it going, man? Hey, I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Nice. Had a good weekend? Oh yeah, a great weekend. The weather was. The weather was good. I'm feeling good. So, yeah, it was a good weekend. I, I didn't really do too much. I supported a couple people and they had some events going on. But other than that, uh, just just chilling. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was definitely – it was a good weekend to be a wrestling fan. I mean, even if 
Yeah, I said it on the post show. I can't stress it enough. Like, even if you were not in the Chicago area, it was just really a great, a great weekend because there was so much stuff going on wrestling-wise. Okay. And we talked briefly about that Extreme uh, Rules pay-per-view. I'd definitely like to get more of your thoughts now that we got you on the air. What was your takeaway from that and then going into Raw? Uh my 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 takeaway from it, um, starting from the beginning of the show, they had uh, Laurinaitis, you know, dude is like very boring. <laughs> like uh-huh. Laurinaitis is very boring, but uh, they had Laurinaitis, and that I I kind of knew that Triple H was gonna come out and talk about that whole demand thing that Brock Lesnar was talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kind of could see that coming. Now with, with him supposedly breaking his arm, I didn't expect that. Uh, I don't know. It, 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 it looked a little real, but you, I don't know. I guess they're trying to play because the mo- any momentum they have for Brock Lesnar, I I feel it's kind of watered down now since he lost to Cena. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know if they're. Uh, I, I guess they're trying to make Lesnar like a like a wrestler who doesn't really care if he wins or loses, just inflicting pain is what he wants to do. So I guess that's the road they're going with Lesnar. Uh, hopefully that is. Right. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see about that. The Chris Jericho and uh, CM Punk, that was the uh, Extreme Rules. That was, you know, that was a good match. Uh, yeah. I give it to him. That was a good match. Yeah. Only only other match I didn't really, I wasn't too thrilled about on Extreme Rules was Kane and Randy Orton. For some reason, I wasn't too thrilled about that. Probably because I've seen them fight too many times, mm-hmm. so it wasn't really nothing too new. You know, Kane, you you know, Kane's not Big Show. You know, Big Show will will, will jump, mess around, and jump off the rope, or, or do a spear, or do a new move here and there. Kane kind of, you know, it, it kind of slowed down yeah, since he's he debuted the new mask. So yeah, he's, he's got he's got that that set that he really doesn't like injecting <laughs> a, a, a new move or two. You didn't think it was at least better than what they did on SmackDown or at WrestleMania, at least. I, I thought well, I, I thought it was better than the WrestleMania match. Mm-hmm. I, I will give them that it was better than the WrestleMania match. Uh, the SmackDown matches are kind of mm, mm-hmm. they're kind of iffy, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I, I do think it was better than the WrestleMania match, even mm-hmm. though Extreme Rules was just a uh, stipula- it's a WrestleMania stipulation pay per view. <laughs> right, right. But you uh, know, I, as I was watching that, because you touched on it, um, the Chris Jericho versus CM Punk. You know, I, I said it on the post show, but as I was watching that particular match, I'm just watching it. I'm saying this reminds me of something of a particular match. I, I just couldn't figure it out, and then it finally came to me. It had the ingredients of Shawn Michaels taking on Triple H at the unsanctioned match SummerSlam 2002. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I kind of figured you were going to say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It it had those ingredients, and I'm like, wow. I mean, it didn't, it didn't, it doesn't blow that match out the, out the water, but Mm-hmm. It, it does remind you of that, and I I love how after a almost a year of ha- having the WWE title, CM Punk he comes right back to his hometown and he gets the job done again. Yeah, yeah. CM Punk is I, actually I think he's evolving into a better champion. Uh, I I I kind of think they water. It. I, I like. When he had the, I guess it was called the Summer of CM Punk, that mm-hmm. was great. Uh, doing those promos and stuff like that, that was great. Now, mm-hmm. him not doing too much of that, I, I did kind of like that. I like what they're kind of, they're trying to label this the reality era, I believe. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I kind of like their reality in there when when CM Punk was, you know, doing those promos, uh, the pipe bombs, if you will. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, hope, hopefully he gets back to doing something like that. I, I guess they got him and Daniel Bryan. We'll be looking forward to that for over the limit. So, right, right. We'll, we'll see if he gets a little crazy on that one. I guess Chris Jericho. I don't know what he's gonna do. I, 
I've been reading a couple spoilers and stuff. I guess he's leaving. I'm not sure, but I don't know. Oh, well, we'll, def- we'll definitely get into that. Trust me. So, with Extreme Rules, the, out of a scale of 1 to 10, how, what would you give the pay-per-view? Uh, I would give it a, uh, I believe I'd give it an 8. Yeah. I'd give it an 8. Uh, I think Brock Lesnar and Cena, that match boosted it up for me. And um, the CM Punk, actually Sheamus and Daniel Bryan was a good match as well. Mm-hmm. I almost forgot about that. That was a good match. That was that was a good match. So, yeah, I give it an eight. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a good match. It definitely was. And uh, for those of you that didn't check out the Extreme Rules pay per view, you haven't seen the pay per view yet. You're not really sure if you want to spend that forty, fifty dollars on the pay per view. I would honestly recommend that you just wait for it to come out on DVD because there was only really about three matches you could really get into. Yeah. The you know the whole pay per view it, it wasn't bad. It, it was just coming away from it, you just kind of felt like ah nothing special, but it was good. And you know I think what really helped was the type of crowd that they were in front of. Yeah. Because yeah, I think that's, I think that's what helps a lot of pay per views. That helps a yeah. lot of pay per view crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, if y'all aren't really sure about the pay per view, like I said, just check it out on DVD. Uh, if you want to know the results, definitely check out the RCWR post show for the Extreme Rules pay per view. And I actually, before we go any further, I gotta thank once again the staff at Blog Talk Radio. They were very gracious enough to make our post show the staff pick on the website for the weekend. And also thank you, the listeners, for checking out that post show. As to date, you've made it be our third most downloaded and listened to show. And we got some feedback about that post show. You all have said it was the best polished off episode yet and I really thank you for that. We're definitely gonna to continue to do a good job of making good episodes and it's funny because I had some technical problems, Scooter, with the audio and mm-hmm. I only was on air for eighty three minutes and then there was some type of a weird freeze through the software and wow. Yeah, I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I sat up. I thought I was going to have to do it all over again, but then I saw out of the – it was supposed to be 120 minutes, but I only got 83, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to have to remix this. I'll have to put in a new intro, let them know what happened, and then jump back in after 83 minutes. And I hurried up re-uploaded it, and people just kept checking it out. So thank you to the listeners for uh, checking out that post show. And continue to support the show, as we definitely appreciate it. And if you like that episode, backtrack. Check out the interview with Justin Reno, great wrestler, up-and-coming wrestler, definitely TNA, WWE bound. Some people would already say this guy is already TNA, WWE material, but let me just set the record straight. The man's already there. He just needs his signature on the dotted line. So, yeah, let's talk about WWE Raw Super Show. As Scooter was saying, uh, Brock Lesnar, he came out and he broke Triple H's arm as it was a very intense confrontation uh, between John Laronitis and Brock Lesnar. And before we go any further, Scooter, how about the way Raw opened up with the starring of Brock Lesnar? Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. That was really funny. <laughs> I didn't think that I didn't think that would do that. It was funny. Yeah, if yeah, we see that opening and we're like, okay, it, it's official. <laughs> you know, and John Laronitis comes out and he tells the WWE Universe that in just one single night, he alone has re-revolutionized the WWE and that all the good things that have been happening is the result of people power. 
and uh, he, you know, he he proclaims that one man in in just one night beat John Cena so bad that he proved that Cena is nothing more than a mortal, and that he's never going to be the same again. As he introduces Brock Lesnar, who he feels brought in legitimacy back to the WWE, and. Mm-hmm. From there, the two men, they're talking in the ring, and Le- uh, Laurinaitis, as usual, he's sucking up to Brock Lesnar when the music <laughs> of Triple H hits, and, and, you know, I'm sure like you, everybody else, we're all happy, we're like, yay, it's the game, all right, and sure. it's what you would expect that Triple H would do, and say, look, Brock, this contract that you had with Johnny over here, that's non-void. That's not what we agreed upon, and I apologize that Laronitis can't do his duties and do what's right, but I will. And you just kind of got to think about it for a second. Okay, do you really want to do this? After what he just did to John Cena. <laughs> you know, it's like, do you do you really want to do this? And it was just crazy as from there, John Laronitis keeps butting in his nose trying to let Triple H know that, hey, I feel that you're disrespecting me, you're disrespecting my authority, we have to honor the contract that uh, was signed as I'm the head person in charge of talent relations. And Triple H tells Laronitis to shut up and he let Brock Lesnar know, hey, look, your days of riding the corporate jet, getting in the limousines, those are over. If you want to keep doing that, it's coming out of your pocket. It's going to be on your dime. We love you. The fans might hate you, but I definitely want you to stay in the WWE. I want to see you take on guys like Randy Orton, Sheamus, CM Punk, but it has to be on the terms of the contract that you initially Sign. So do we have a deal? Yep. Yep. And you know, in most cases, money is money. You go on ahead and and you say, all right, as long as I'm getting my money, it's all good. And what happens, folks? John Laronitis he keeps interrupting. Triple H turns around. He's trying to have a few words with Johnny and Brock Lesnar. Microphone. Actually, no, it wasn't even the microphone. He hit him with a forearm. And then mm-hmm. just proceeded to just pound the hell out of Triple H, putting his business suit over his head, and he's just going to the body, he's going to the face, and to Triple H, it looks like he's getting ready to make some type of a comeback when all of a sudden Brock Lesnar gets him in this weird, I, I had the name of it earlier, it starts with a G, but it's basically a jujitsu type of submission maneuver and he just breaks that arm and this prompts Brock Lesnar's security to come out and Big Show, R-Truth, who who else was in there? Uh, Sheamus and uh, Kofi Kingston. And Kofi Kingston, you got all of them coming out and but the carnage has already been done as Brock Lesnar and you know what's so beautiful about this angle? I love how they didn't make Brock Lesnar go, oh, my God, four guys are coming. Let me run into the crowd. They basically just had Brock Lesnar just calmly get out the ring, move the steps, and his eyes are just piercing through everybody that's in that ring like, come get some if you if you that concerned. Yep. <laughs> you know, beautiful, beautiful. And, folks, that was pretty much the meat and potatoes of the night for WWE Raw Super Show, as from there it just, a very strong opening, but from there it just kind of sank a little bit as it would be revealed that there would be five matches of beat-the-clock challenges to try to determine who's going to be the number one contender to face CM Punk at the Over the Limit pay-per-view, and the first match we had Miz 
defeating Santino. And I thought this match was, was, don't get me wrong, both of those guys great. It's nice seeing The Miz back on WWE television once again. Um, But at the same time, this was a dark match that we saw Sunday night. Yep. You know, so it's kind of like, okay, uh, what, our truth wasn't available to do a singles match? Um, David Otunga wasn't available? I know he's a little bit tied up with Jennifer Hudson right now because they got that court case going on, but it's like, okay, I, okay, I guess maybe he's not really available. It's like they couldn't find anybody else that could have worked this match uh, against The Miz. As yeah, you know, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't like that either. I mean, you, you, like like you said the night before. Of course, everybody know the YouTube pre-show Santino and the Miz for the United States Championship. You have Santino win, but the next night for Beat the Clock Challenge, you have the Miz win. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, uh, <laughs> yeah. The Miz, I mean, we we know we know this is entertainment, and that's why Santino wins. Otherwise. I mean, the Cobra is not really a <laughs> no, not really no, a powerful it's move. It's not, no, no. And are you still with me, Scoot? I hear a little little uh, signal. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. And from there, folks, we would see, uh, oh, Miz would win this match as he would set the record for four minutes and 18 seconds. So that's the time that the other wrestlers have to beat. Um, Mm -hmm. It's the second match of the evening. This was another one, even though it was a triple threat. And keep in mind, this was the beautiful part. I actually had to watch Raw Super Show twice because the first time I watched it, I didn't even hear this, but when I watched it earlier today, because that's what I usually do to make sure I didn't miss anything, especially the little things, and they only referenced that this was a triple threat match once. So you're kind of under the impression that this is a rematch from the pay-per-view, but it was actually a right. triple threat. And this match would end in record seconds as uh, Layla would be, I guess it was Nikki Bella, who she pinned in a roll-up, and in a WWE.com exclusive uh, the Bella Twins would be fired by the executive administrator, Eve. And as we all know, the Bella Twins, their contract, it was set to expire several weeks back. There was word that they were going to be leaving the company, but a lot of people weren't really sure. So really it came down to what was going to happen Sunday, what was going to happen Monday as it was rumored that Karma was supposed to be making a return to uh, the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. And, in fact, she was at Extreme Rules. She was in the backstage area. She tried to send out a text message or two saying that she was at home watching the event, but she was there. WWE, they just didn't want to use her that particular night. Uh, So, which brought us to, yeah, yeah, you know, so it brought us to Monday night. And as you saw, the Bella Twins, you know, now for you all that's listening, just know the Bella Twins, they left the WWE on good terms, so they can come back at any time. So, you know, I know there's a lot of Bella Twins that are a little, you know, mad about that, but just know they can come back at any time. So it wouldn't surprise me if they came back from time to time, maybe do like a special episode of Raw backstage skit or something like that. We'll definitely see them again before the year is out. Um, Our second Beat the Clock uh, match challenge, Chris Jericho versus Big Show. Now, this is where I think a a botched move occurred because key point (laughs) in this contest, yeah, and Scoot, I definitely want to get your take on this. uh, The key point in this match is when the Big Show and Jericho, they're fighting outside the ring, Big Show pushes Jericho into, like, the padded barrier, and then he tries to charge at him. And Jericho moves out the way in time, and he just sends Big Show flying over it. The ref, he's just been counting the whole time. He's getting ready to count to ten, and Jericho gets 
in the ring right at three seconds, and I tried for the love of me. I, I actually heard Chris Jericho say something to the referee, and, and for you all that's listening, if anybody has any type of a special sound enhancement, I'd like for you to, to play it, uh, see if you could use your software and do something with that, because I swear to you, I'm hearing Chris Jericho say, hey, count faster, as the referee counts down to zero, and we're like, okay, so nobody won. But the ref picks up uh, Chris Jericho's hand as the victor, and it's so funny because Jerry Lawler says, well, wait a minute now, um, that can't be right. Uh, well, why don't we take a commercial so we can sort this out? And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, yeah, y'all, your boy botched that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> right, and uh, it, it was it was just so silly, and I'm thinking to myself, and notice, Scooter, notice how that referee didn't show back up the rest of the night. <laughs> no, yeah, they, I, I believe they sent him home. <laughs> <laughs> they told right. him to go get an early drink or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 because... Um, uh, after they came back from the commercial break, the, they did clean it up. They said that nobody won that match. Miz was still intact. And from there, our next match of the evening, we would see Brodus Clay defeat JTG. And this was interesting right here. I like what happened post-match when they brought the little kids in the ring. I'm watching that, and I'm having an old-school moment. I'm like, oh, that's a junkyard dog moment right there, you know. <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's that's pretty cool. And all throughout the night, folks, they were showing still images from the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, and they just kept going overkill with Brock Lesnar breaking Triple H's arm. And there was yeah. a backstage segment with Triple H. You know, he said, oh, my arm. Now, this is where it gets silly. The medical examiner, he's talking to Triple H, and Triple H is like, my, I know what's wrong. He's basically saying he knows what's wrong with his arm. He knows it's out of the socket. Uh, and the the uh, medical examiner, he's like, can you feel this? And Triple H is like, uh-huh, no. And the medical examiner's like, well, can you squeeze my hand? Ah, uh, barely. And I'm thinking to myself, where's the tears? Because there should be tears <laughs> coming out of your face if you're in that much excruciating pain. It's like I've, I've broken my arm before playing football. And, you know, it hurts like hell, and you can't help but kind of <laughs> shed a tear or two. You know, right, and you're right, like, right. <laughs> he's like, come on, you know, give him some onions or something. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like from there, folks, we see a backstage segment. Eve is talking with Johnny Laronitis, and she's telling him, look, I, I know you're upset. The WWE board of directors, they're probably going to want to have a conversation with you. They're probably going to say that you're responsible for what happened to Triple H, but right now you need to think about what opponent John Cena is going to be facing. And we back up a second, and this to me just came off as another botched move because we were informed at the pay-per-view that John Cena is supposed to be going on vacation. So now John Cena is going to have an opponent and John Laronitis would tell Eve, I know just the person that he's going to be facing as uh, he's going to be going face-to-face -face with John Cena later in the evening. Uh, from there, we had our next Beat the Clock Challenge, Randy Orton uh, taking on Jack Swagger. Randy Orton would beat Jack Swagger and set the new record by two seconds to eliminate The Miz as his new record to beat is 4 minutes, 16 seconds. Match 4, we had the tag team titles on the line where Kofi Kingston, our truth they defeated Primo and Epico to become the new WWE Tag Team Champions. And, uh, Scooter, what were your thoughts about that one? Were you a little bit happy to see that the belts got taken off of Primo and Epico? Well, I actually, for some reason, I, I believe because WWE does this a lot, I seen it coming. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of seen our truth and uh, um, 
I was about to I was about to call him his old name, K Quick. But R Truth and um Kofi Kingston, uh, for them winning the tag team titles, I think that's good, especially for R Truth. Now for Kofi, I, I I'm not too thrilled about that for him. Uh, he's been stuck at that mid card for a while. I think if they if they gave Ziggler um, a chance at the heavyweight title so many times, then they should give uh, Kofi one. Mm. He's been he's he's a he's he's an outstanding wrestler. You know he he he'll pull out some moves that'll have you like wow. <laughs> so uh, I, I I but I do I, I do like the the win for them. I think it's a good look, and I want to see what they're gonna do next. Mm. Are they gonna make an invisible belt for little Jimmy or? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> right, that would be awesome if they did that. That would that would really be awesome. And yeah. uh, the next match of the night, which was really a snoozer, and what's been happening a lot is whenever Big Show and Great Khali comes out, the 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 thing that's trending now, courtesy of Cody Rhodes, is up. Uh, it's time to go take a big show. It's time to go take a great Kylie. <laughs> As these two guys are in the next uh, beat the clock match, and in case you've been keeping track, this is the fourth beat the clock match now. And you got to give Kane a lot of props. 45 years old, this guy is in this ring. And you just got to give him a lot of props on this one because he may not be as technical as... Uh, as um, he may not be as technical for his size as Brock Lesnar. He may not be as uh, uh, technical and, and have the speed like a psycho Sid, but he carried uh, Kylie in this match, and you just got to give him, give him enough props because Kylie, mm-hmm. you know, he's got the bad knees. He just knows how to chop and do the two-handed slam, so you, you you gotta. It's like making something out of nothing, and nobody would win this match, folks, as they just move so slow. And I wish I was telling a joke, but I'm not. They just move so <laughs> slow that the time just expired. And I like the touch at the end, though. Great Kali, he he lets go of Kane, and he's looking at the ref like, "Oh, the, the time expired, all." Oh. And Kane just, you know, Kane just choke slams him and just rolls out. I'm like, okay, that's a nice little touch. And um, from there, still to come, John Laronitis, John Cena. I'm just going to start calling it John and John. Their encounter uh, is supposed to come later tonight. And in the final Beat the Clock Challenge, we see Daniel Bryan facing Jerry Lawler and Scooter. What was your thoughts on this when you first saw, oh, it's Jerry the King Lawler? What was your thoughts about that? I I thought they could have used somebody else. I I thought they that's when they needed to really have somebody else. Jerry the King, uh, uh, there really was no point in putting him there. Mm. They could have did um, uh, who was it? Dolph Ziggler. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't think he was in a in a, in a beat the clock match, Mm-mm. but uh, yeah, they could they could have did Dolph Ziggler, who who to me is the 2012 Billy Gunn. So I mean, he 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 would would have did well. I'm actually a, I'm actually becoming a Dolph Ziggler fan, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. So they he, could they could have used him. Yeah, he's he's winning fans each time he comes out there to the ring. You bring up a very valid point. As Dolph Ziggler was not even on Raw last night. Mhm. Mhm. So, yeah, and that's that's like, man, you guys are killing his momentum. He actually lost the night before. They didn't promote the match, mm-hmm. uh, but he lost the Extreme Rules to uh, Rodis Clay. Yep. Yep. So uh, yeah, that was kind of a letdown. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I don't know what I don't know what they're doing with him, but you're definitely right. This this guy definitely needs to be um, utilized more and definitely pushed because he definitely has everything that's needed to be a champion. And mm-hmm. um, folks, I know you all heard Jerry Lawler. You all wondering the same thing. Why? You know, we agree a hundred percent. Jerry Lawler. I, you know what? 
let me backtrack. When I saw Jerry Lawler come out, I'll admit, the first thing I said to myself, are they in Memphis? Because if they're in Memphis, then this justifies it. But then once I realized that they were in Dayton, Ohio, I'm sure like many of everybody else were like, okay, then why is he in this match if it's not in Memphis? Right. And, yeah. you know, but, but have no fear, folks. Daniel Bryan, he would pick up the win, and this would prompt CM Punk to come out to face the new challenger for the, his WWE championship. And what better way than two Ring of Honor alumni going at it in three weeks? Scooter, what's your thoughts about that one? I think that's going to be a uh, – I think it's going to be a good match. I really think it might even steal the show. Mm-hmm. If they if, if they do it right, uh, it might steal the show. Uh, Daniel Bryan is a great technical wrestler. Um, CM Punk as well is it, pretty good. So uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to play this off. Are they going to actually let Daniel Bryan get the belt, or mm-hmm. is it going to be some kind of uh, – Ending where it's not a a clean ending. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's definitely gonna gonna be a good one. And, and for those of you that are not familiar with Ring of Honor and CM Punk and Daniel Bryan being involved in that indie promotion, there are tons of video footages out there. YouTube is your best friend. You can definitely see those matches. But as Scooter said, it's definitely this rivalry, the match that they're going to have in a few weeks. It can definitely be the show stealer of the night. And to wrap up Raw, we would have John Cena come out. And he basically says to the crowd, hey, my arm's broken, uh, I'm in pain, uh, but the MRI, I'm good. The x-rays, I'm good. I just got strained. I'll be okay. I'm here tonight. I'm not like some guys. You know, if you're hurt, then you're sent home. But, uh, no, no, he said if you're injured, then you get sent home. But if you're hurt, you suck it up. You keep you keep on. You, you, you just keep continuing, and that's what I'm doing right now. John Laronitis would come out. And he talked about the calm before the storm. He would try to tell John Cena, look, I did what I did with you and Brock Lesnar because I was trying to help make you better. And that he did succeed in making John Cena better. And as far as John Cena was concerned, well, if all you wanted to do was give me a little bit of a pep talk, all you had to do was pat me on the butt and and say, good job, or, hey, hey, you know, you're doing all right. It's like, you didn't need to sick Brock Lesnar on me. You're just trying to take me out. And, yeah, right. you know, and from there, John Cena, he throws the insults at John Laronitis, and Laronitis says, look, you need to be nice to me right now. You need to have a good working relationship with me because I can either make things bad for you or I can make things good for you. It's up to you. And John Cena would say, how how much worse can things get because you've already put me in a match against Brock Lesnar? How worse can it possibly get? And this would prompt John Laronitis to say, well, you said that you're hurt, but that you can continue on. Let me introduce you to your opponent for Over the Limit in three weeks. And the music of Lord Tensai would come on, folks as Lord Tensai would make his way to the ring along with his manager. They would get in the ring. They would surround John Cena. And before anybody could attack, it would actually be John Laronitis that would attack John Cena from behind with a microphone and proceed to kick the living heck out of John Cena's injured arm and then grab a microphone and inform Cena that it's going to be him that he's going to be facing at over the limit. And from there would play quarterback as he instructed Tensai and his manager to continue injuring John Cena's arm, taking him over in between the uh, uh, turnbuckle uh, guard posts. And John Laronitis is just, again, 
inflicting pain on that left arm, following up with a steel chair before getting back in the ring and hand gesturing to John Cena that he's not going to be able to see him. And so that is going to be one of our main events for Over the Limit. It's going to be John versus John. Scooter, what was your takeaway from the way that played out in the overall takeaway of Raw Super Show? I, uh, well, John versus John being set up, I, I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> uh, that that was kind of like a curveball. Mm. Um, I I do think it'll be, um, I do think it'll be like a Vince McMahon versus a uh, Triple H or Shawn Michaels type of deal. Mm. Uh, but it, 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 you never know. It might be something where he brings Lord Tenzai in. And has has him beat up Cena for a while, and then he tries to pin him or something like that. So that that might be a that might be an entertaining match. Mm-hmm. Uh, not really looking for too much wrestling in that match, but that might be an entertaining match. And uh, Raw is a, just just as a general, it was a, it was a you know coming from Extreme Rules, I think they could have played more of the the weird role that happened at Extreme Rules, you know, when Cena got on the mic and was saying he's going to be gone for a while. I think they could have played that up a little bit more mm-hmm. on Raw or expounded that. Um, but other than that, I, I, I say Raw got a C for me. <laughs> yeah. They got about a C. It, it was, the beginning was cool, and then it kind of, I guess when, I guess they really did kick Brock Lesnar out the building because we didn't hear anything else about him. So, right, yeah, you're definitely right about that. And uh, now the only question remains: what is going to happen next week? And to wrap up Raw, let's give you a little bit of insight because I definitely want to switch gears and talk about music, in particular Scooter's music. But to wrap up the Raw Super Show. This is my takeaway from it in a nutshell. The events that took place with Brock Lesnar, you can rest assured that the WWE Board of Directors, and if I were a betting man, and I usually do not bet, it's extremely rare I bet. Last time mm-hmm. I bet it, well, last time I bet it and I put money where my mouth is, it was 10 years ago and I was on point. If I were to put money on what happened, between Brock Lesnar and Triple H. It wouldn't surprise me if Vince McMahon were to make an appearance. Okay? Oh. That's his son-in-law. Okay? It would yeah. not surprise me if he were to pop up or if his name was referenced next week, as you can expect one thing, and that is um, Brock Lesnar is definitely going to be suspended. Okay? Mm-hmm. You can definitely expect that. And for those of you that have been paying attention, you've been educating yourself with what's going on behind the wrestling scenes, then you know that Brock Lesnar, he's got that 30 to 40 day appearances clause in his contract. And he's Mm -hmm. only supposed to make two to three live appearances a month, really two appearances. And that if more appearances are needed, then it's basically at his discretion. He can make the call if he wants to do more appearances. So this is a great way to have him off TV for a little bit so they can try to figure out another angle, uh, another way to bring him back in and still keep that excitement that he's been bringing to the WWE since his return. You know what? If I were a betting man, definitely expect for him to be suspended next week. I won't say indefinitely suspended, but I would say honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if he got suspended for maybe a month. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, suspend him for a month, and they can just they could just keep doing the hype, and the seeds are already set. Triple H is going to be taking on. Brock Lesnar, and I got an interesting question from a fan on Twitter. Actually, I'll correction, not Twitter, uh, through email earlier today. He said, hey, 
Did Triple H and Brock Lesnar ever lock it up? And if so, when? Or if they didn't, how come? And the answer to that question, uh, Todd, I think the, it was the guy's name. No, Triple H and Brock Lesnar, they never did lock it up. When Brock Lesnar was in the WWE from 2002 to 2004, back then, if you remember, it was really two separate brands. They really emphasized that a lot. You really didn't have wrestlers going on to the other shows like it is right now. There was no cross-promotion. So during that time frame, while Triple H was dominating on the Raw side, Brock Lesnar was dominating on the SmackDown side. So this should definitely be interesting to see how these two, you know, the seeds are already planted. I think they're going to have one phenomenal match when they hook up. I just hope that the right thing is done when these two do do a match and that Brock Lesnar gets the win. Otherwise, it's going to be, a oh, well, Triple H has to have his his uh, stab. He's got to get that win over that guy just to prove that he's the big man. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that's my takeaway from that. Let's do this. We're going to pause for 60 seconds, and then we'll, when we come right back, we're going to talk music. We're going to talk about um, Scooter's uh, musical career so far, and we're actually going to play one of his newest tracks uh, that came out not too long ago, New New, really great track. Uh, Stick around. You're listening to the Tuesday night edition of the RCWR show. We'll be back in 60 seconds. All right, and we are back. You're listening to the Tuesday night edition of the RCWR show. I'm, of course, the Black Avenger, as always, Lee Sanders, and we got special guest, Scooter. And, folks, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, Scooter is a Midwest Christian hip-hop rapper. And, you know, when I was telling my friends who I I had coming on the show this week, they were like, huh? I was like, no, 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 no. It's like, you know, because when they think Christian or gospel and then you put rap in it, yeah, they automatically think that, oh, well, you know, it's it's not going to be good. It's not going to be... WPGC, it's not going to be, and, <laughs> you know, I'm saying to myself, you guys are just idiots, y'all can't appreciate good good music, and <laughs> I I must admit, when I listen to the track Nunu, I'm like, wow, this is so good, and I w- walked away from that, and I said, you know what, this is the type of music I wish hip-hop rap could be more about, because... Every single time. And for me to say that, I mean, that's it takes a lot for me to say that because I'm not happy with the current state of rapping hip-hop right now because it seems like every time I turn around, they're playing songs that just really don't even make sense. They're, they're talking about basically getting money and uh, uh, having sex with multiple women and the the videos it just it's just getting to the point right now where it wouldn't surprise me if we reach that time where in the music videos the women just don't have anything on and they just dancing with a bottle of Chardonnay or whatever like that. And, right, right. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm at that point right now where if I do listen to uh rap, hip hop, I'm I'm listening to Trap Called Quest, I'm listening to Common um, I'm listening to um, all the old school, uh, Houdini, you know, I'm, I'm listening to old school music like that. So for me to to listen to uh, the, that new song you did, New New, and then I listened to a couple of your other songs, I'm like, wow, this is definitely a throwback, and I like the message that it sends, because off the break, I'm sitting up saying to myself, you know, okay, um, you can make your point and not have to use profanity and, yeah. you know, really send a good message out there. And I'd like for you to tell, you know, some of the listeners that may not be familiar uh, w- with you, your upbringings, I'd like for you to tell them, you know, more about yourself. Because, you know, I did my homework. I, you know, I already know uh, about you. <laughs> and I must say, I, you know, I, 
I like what I know about you. I mean, you seem really cool, man. I mean, you seem like one of those type of people. I definitely could, you know, kick back and just talk about anything where, you know, you seem really cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, tell the listeners a little bit, you know, about your music career, how you started off, your upbringings. Well, I, uh, I started, it, it's been a long time starting uh, doing music. I started about uh, a little over 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um and I was I was doing always doing rap and stuff. Uh, I, I would sing in the shower, <laughs> stuff like that. No 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 public appearances. But uh, <laughs> you know you, you know I, I would I, I'm actually really just a goofy person. Um, I used to I used to be like the class clown. Everybody would know me. If anything was to happen, if anybody was to come having some some kind of clothes on or, or look a certain way. People would look at me expecting me to say something, and they're expecting to laugh, and that's just how I always been. I am still like that now. I'm trying to get better. I don't. I don't talk about people as much, but I, I do it in a joking way, not a way that you would want to get angry or mad. Uh, I would say something, and you would actually laugh too. You'd be like, "Oh man, ah, oh, you got me, ah, oh, you know, not not one of those things where you'd be like, "Oh man, I'm gonna hurt you." It right. wouldn't be nothing like that. It'd just be like, "Oh man, oh okay, that was good. I didn't even know. Yeah, you got me. You got me." So uh, uh, I've been in church my whole life. I never really was a thug or try to do any drugs or anything like that. I never tried to do anything like that. I always, uh, like I said, I've been watching wrestling ever since. Uh, my, my father brought me up in wrestling, so I've been a wrestling fan since I, I was born. Basically, I was born into it. He used to be a wrestler as well, so um, uh, watch wrestling and, and listen to music and stuff and. Like I said, I've been 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 in church my whole life. Only thing I used to deal with was uh, before I got married. I'm married now, so shout outs to my wife. Um, but only thing before I got married, I used to be very promiscuous. Like I would just 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 love women. <laughs> like that was my major downfall. But um, I got my act together. Um, I got serious in church. Changed my life and everything. And then now I'm just trying to make sure that I let people know that there is a better way at life. A lot of people like to throw religion. I don't want to throw religion too much in people's face, but I just want to let you know, you know, it's a, it's a better way. You can you, you there is you can actually be happy every day. You don't have to be mad all the time or problems come up. You can just brush it off and just say, "Hey, you know, I'm good." And keep it moving. So that's basically what I do with my music and and type of person I am. Mm. I I think that's a very good message because, you know, we have so many people that are walking around, they're either upset at the world or they're sitting up and they're just bashing everything, whether it's uh, just for the heck of it or they're just bashing anything that could be positive. You know those type of people. You have people Mm -hmm. that because things aren't going well for them and they see that things might be going good for another person, they kind of crap on them, try to feed off that negative energy onto them. And, you know, that's really not what it just needs to be about. It really needs to be about just being positive, even when you're at your most darkest hour, and we all have been in that position uh, of having a really dark period, you you just got to, you have to keep the faith, and you have to uh, remain diligent, you have to remain positive. Good things will come in its due time, and, you know, as I was growing up, something that my mom used to always say to me, she would say, um, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, they look up at the sky, and they expect for the Lord to be able to help them right at the drop of a dime. But that's not how it works. The Lord will work on his schedule, and Mm -hmm. it may not come when you want it. That good news may not happen, you know, right then and there, but it always comes on time and possibly when you least expect it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, yeah. So, and you uh, now I know you've been. Uh, you say you were rapping. So you've been rapping since you were twelve. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. That's yes, pretty sir. pretty amazing. Well, let's do this. Let's go on ahead and let's play a uh, new track that you released uh, not too long ago. It's called New New, 
And folks, you're definitely going to enjoy this song, so kick back, have yourself a cold one. Uh hopefully you're, you know, drinking a soda or something right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it could be a it could be a bottle of beer, it doesn't matter. But kick back, <laughs> relax, and enjoy this new track from Scooter is called New New, so enjoy. <laughs> Like a million bucks, but not cause I'm ballin' now. Nah, nah. I got the lowest love, love. nothing different about me. Uh-huh. Oh, me is dead and gone. Okay. I'm turned up off the Lord. I'm in my praise zone. Go, 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 go. It's time to give him praise. Another one for the kingdom. Right. We about to celebrate. Okay. A Holy Ghost party. party. Yeah, it's that new sound. Uh-huh. Hands in the air. Uh-huh. Now bounce them up and down. Every day, every day, I'm super fresh, fresh. Lord, you save my life. life. Too blessed to be stressed, stressed. You plan and die for me, me. So I can be with you, you. Always a pass away. Wow. Come on, my new, new. New, new. new walk, new talk, new life, new style, new me. I'm free, free. I'm saved, I'm mine. mine. New walk, new talk, new, new life, new style, new me. I'm free, free. I'm saved. What I used to do, do My life changed The old gone I'm brand new, new I got a new way of thinking And I got a new way of speaking And I thank God every day Cause I'm fresh Like I'm about to go and party on the weekend Hey, 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 hey. Still give the praise Pray. Nothing was for the king We about to celebrate Pray. A holy ghost party Party yeah, this that new sound Pray. Hands in the air Pray. Now about them up and down New mercy every day, day. We super fresh, fresh. Lord, you save our life, life. Too blessed to be stressed, stressed. You played and died for us, us. So we could be with you. You always a pass away. We no, no, on that new, no, no, new. No. New walk, new talk, new life, new style, new me. I'm free, free. I'm saved, saved. Mine. Mine. New walk, new talk, new, new life, new style, new me. I'm free, free. I'm saved. Digital outlets. Okay, how much? How much? Let them know now. Uh, ninety nine cents. It's only a dollar. <laughs> One dollar. For That's that less song. than a five dollar foot song. long. For that song. Yes. Okay. Yes, for that song. For that song. Come on, y'all. Ninety nine cent. That that's worth it. Don't do that pirating stuff. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that YouTube stuff. Just go on ahead. It's a dollar. Represent. 
This man definitely has some really great inspirational throwback music. You know what I love best <laughs> about this music? You wouldn't even know that it had that it ties in the gospel um uh Christian music. You wouldn't know. It's just like uh what was that rock band that was high at one point? It's like Creed. There was an aura about them where hey, you know, these guys they don't really curse. Uh, are they Christian? And, you know, they kind of played with the idea. Then it was finally revealed after they broke up that, yeah, we were actually a Christian rock band, um, Mm -hmm. you know, at least according to the lead singer. But I love every single track. I've heard some of the the other songs. And, folks, it's really good stuff. And uh, you got to let the fans know, are you going to be going on any type of a promotional tour? Uh, will you tell them uh, to possibly see you? <laughs> uh, right now, yes, I am uh, trying to start the new, new promo tour, promoting uh, new, new across wherever. Wherever people want to bring me, I will come out. It will be no problem. Uh, if you're listening now, you like the song, you want to bring me to your city, it's cool. All you got to do is go to my website, www.iamscooter, that's I-A-M-S-C-O-O-D-A, dot com and we'll bring the new new tour to your city. Uh if you have an event, whatever, you know, if you want me to come to the school, whatever, you know, it, it's needed everywhere. And the message for the new new is just simply, you know, every single day we're we're we we should be happy that we're waking up. A lot of people don't get to wake up and see a new day. So it's just basically a phone that's celebrating opening our eyes every single morning for a new day. We're new new. Like it's a it's a new new time new, we got we got a new breath every time we wake up so that's basically what the song is talking about. Yeah, so that's that's a very good message, a very good message indeed. And folks, that's May eighth. It's going to be available on a Tuesday in iTunes. So you definitely want to check that out. Definitely check out his website, um, uh, uh, Twitter. Let's give, give yeah. them all your information. Let them know where they can get you. Twitter, uh, hit me up on Twitter at official scooter. That's O F F I C I A L S C O O D A. Hit me up on Twitter for anybody that's listening that has an Android device. This is a fun thing. I just do it. This just happened like last week or so. Mm-hmm. I'm on the Google Play Store. If anybody has an Android device anywhere. Worldwide, all you have to do is go to the Play Store on your Google phone. I mean, on your Android phone. Type in Scooter S C O O D A, and I got a free download for you all to enjoy. It's a free song on there. So, uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook as well. Facebook, just type in Scooter in the search bar, or go to Facebook.com backslash official Scooter. And like I said, the website www.iamscooter.com. Basically, if you go to if you go to Google dot com and type in school to I'll be like the first result. So can't miss it. There you go, high high up in the search engine ranks. That's what you want, okay? So you're not <laughs> gonna have a hard time finding Scooter. I promise you, uh you listen to if you like that song that you just heard, uh you'll definitely like the rest of the songs. I'm not pulling your leg, folks. Uh, Like I said at the beginning of the show, his people had actually got in contact with me, and, you know, they told me how much of a huge wrestling fan Scooter is. And so for me, that was plus one. And then they told me how he is uh, a a rapper. I said, okay, that's plus two. And when (laughs) I listened to the music myself, I said, yes. I, you know, And I didn't just stop at the the new, new song. I said, okay, I got to hear one more. And I say, yeah, this guy, he has a very great message. His music is just on point. You know, you won't be disappointed. Definitely check him out at all those links. And, uh, Scooter, I know we ran past the actual time that, um, because originally you were only supposed to be on for about 40 minutes. I thank you so (laughs) much for Uh, going going overtime. I I really do appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on to the show. And you know what, man? Anytime you want to just kick back and you want to talk wrestling, man, I wouldn't mind just kicking back and just doing an entire show with you. So if you ever get a a free moment 
um, you know, definitely let me know because I definitely want to want for us to keep in touch with one another because I definitely want to, you know, uh, follow your career closely. Uh, and not to mention, it's always good to have a a uh, a new friend of the RCWR family. I appreciate it. I, I will take you up on that offer. Uh, I'm gonna be watching it every. Every 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 week I'm be watching wrestling. I, I'm I'm trying to get into SmackDown. I'm trying. I used to get. I used to be into SmackDown. I'm trying to get back more into SmackDown. Me just being a wrestling fan get, pulls me into SmackDown. But Raw is kind of like the better show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand why they don't do SmackDown super shows, but hey, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I probably, probably, SmackDown probably gets watered down because. If we can't mi- if we miss it, we can't, there's always spoilers online that tells us everything that happens. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, um, you know, and I'm I'm not saying this to blow smoke, uh, but you know, I I like our chemistry. It's pretty cool, and I've been Batman flying solo on this for a little while now, and I have been looking for a co-host. There was a couple of people that. Uh, I was interested in, but, like, they had other commitments. It was cool. So I've been flying solo for a while, and I had my staff say, it's time for you to get some guests. You you, you got the solo <laughs> part down. Now it's time for you to get some guests. I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's do it. And uh, <laughs> it, we, we're still new doing the guest thing, but I have to say that, uh, and I don't want Justin Reno to call me and, 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 and you know, but you two, I'll let you two get it on in the ring. But so far, you two have been, you two have been very, very, I, I, I like Scooter better. But, <laughs> you know, but I'm messing, I'm messing with Justin. Justin, if you listen, brother, you're, you're cool to your RCWR family. But, yeah, man, definitely, anytime you want to come on and you want to talk about an episode of Raw, man, just – Anytime you are just welcome. Pay per view, it don't matter. You are just welcome. I appreciate it. I, I really appreciate it. I thank you for having me on the show, and thank you for allowing me this time to talk about everything. So I appreciate it. All right, brother. Well, definitely stay in contact, and you know we'll definitely be over here. We'll definitely be watching your career very closely. And folks, check him out. You can check him out on Twitter. You can check him out on Facebook. Check him out on Google. As he said earlier, all you got to do is just type in in a Google engine search, SCOODA, uh, S-C-O-O-D-A, and boom, all the information that you need is going to be right there. For you all that like to uh, download our episodes, we're going to have all the information for you uh, as it's uploaded, as we'll also upload it uh, on YouTube with just the interview part uh, between... um, uh, myself and Scooter, but you know, actually, I'll probably do two versions of this. I'll go on ahead. I'll make the one version with us talking about Raw and uh, your music career, and then we'll just have one where we talk about uh, your music, your musical career, so that they can choose which one they they want to pick up and grab. But, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Scooter, man. This this guy's the man. And uh, Scooter, <laughs> thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you coming on, man. It really means a lot. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. We'll, we'll talk soon. We're we'll, we'll, we going to stay up on Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know it. You know it, brother. Def- definitely. <laughs> All right. All right, bro. You have a good night. You too. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Once again, folks, that was Scooter. It was definitely an honor and a privilege to have him come on to the show this past week. Now, that was only a snippet portion of what we covered on this past Tuesday night show to hear the episode in its entirety which I highly recommend that you do definitely check it out you can access it by going to our website at www.blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show again that's www.blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show you can also access it through the iTunes and Zoom marketplaces. Keywords, the RCWR show. And that's going to do it, folks. But remember to join us this Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for our special edition episode dubbed as The Avengers Fan Reaction. 
definitely going to be a really cool show as I had the liberty of interacting with moviegoers over the weekend that saw the Avengers movie. You're definitely going to like what they have to say. We'll also try to see if we can squeeze in some live callers and get live callers fan reactions to the Avengers movie. It's really going to be a very cool episode. I definitely encourage you to check that out. And then remember, three hours after that Avengers special at 12 a.m., we will air our WWE Raw post show. So we'll get you caught up on everything that went down with Raw from that past Monday. We'll also get you caught up on the latest in wrestling and entertainment news. That's going to do it, folks. Hope y'all are having a great weekend so far. And remember to join us this Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for our, our Avengers fan reaction special episode. Take care.